Hello everybody, welcome to the uh, planning committee meeting on this day the 2nd of February. Welcome councillors, welcome officers. We'll start with the first item on the agenda which is apologies for absence. Yes, Councillor Hamilton. Yeah, um, firstly apologies from the Deputy Mayor, Councillor Eggleton. Secondly, apologies from uh, Councillor Ian Clark. Um, I'm substituting for Councillor Ian Clark tonight. Just wanted to let you know, Chair, Ian is currently in the Royal Barks, and I'm sure all councillors will wish him a speedy recovery, recovery from what is a non-COVID related item. Okay, uh, yes. He's full of beans, he's ever determined, and he'll be back on the 16th of February. Thank you, thank you for that, Councillor Hamilton. Um, okay, we have also got another apology, haven't we, from Councillor Crook? Yeah, okay. All right, thank you. Um, Next item on the agenda is declarations of interest. Do we have any this evening? No, nope, I see none. So let's move on to the next item on the agenda, which is number three, the minutes to approve the minutes um, of the last meeting, which was held on the 12th of January. Uh, Councillor Gavrishak for proposal. Thank you. Do I have a seconder? Councillor Plant, thank you. All those in favour? Thank you. That's, uh, that's carried. Next item on the agenda is number four, which is our public participation section of the agenda. Um, and we do have um, several um, members of the public who wish to speak. Um, and what I'll do is I'll call them just in the order um, that I have them here. Uh, so the first one, please, is Richard Guy. Richard Guy. Richard Guy, I'm calling Richard Guy. No, okay, I'll try, uh, perhaps I'll try again in a moment. Um, so the next one is, um, I've got Lena Pavelson. That's me. Lena Pavelson. Hello. Hello there, hello. Um, you've got two to three minutes, just introduce yourself briefly and let us know which item you're speaking to and then whenever you're ready. Okay. Uh, good evening, everyone. Um, I'm represent representing our client, Gary Chester, in regard to planning application at 48 Parkshire Road. Uh, to make our application easy to understand, I'm sharing a, my screen for a really short presentation, if that's okay. Yep, okay. Okay, uh, just one second. Um, share screen. Okay, how is this able participant screen sharing? I don't know if anybody is able to let me to share my screen, possibly. Uh, it, does, it doesn't let me to share my screen? No, I can't see that it's got a facility to let me, let, to allow me to let you share it, I'm afraid. Um, yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. So not not to worry. We'll have to move on. If you just like to give us a verbal uh, presentation, that'd be absolutely fine. Okay. Uh, the amended proposal. I hope you have all seen it on the uh, on your website. Was drawn up following clear guidance by the SODC planning officer Tabina Saurak, and it follows all relevant planning policies and any concerns raised by the neighbours and Henley Town. Uh, uh, council have been addressed in this proposal. Um, the proposed double story extension is one and a half meters deep and it now has hip proof. It's really difficult, I think, for you to understand it's not looking at the screen actually. Um, I'm trying my best. Mm -hmm. And the side extension that was proposed is sitting above the existing garage and is amended to follow the existing footprint of the existing garage. And the uh, extension is set back from very similar properties uh, which are neighbouring this extension. Uh, the depth of the singular story extension has been reduced to the depth of the double story extension, and it is being moved away from the boundary uh, by uh, 30 centimetres to 3 metre length and further 20 centimetres for remaining 1.5 metres. And there is a small uh, single story extension to the far end of the double story extension. Uh, the amendments also include the hip roof and the uh, sloping eaves of all the extensions. Uh, and none of the 
uh, areas of extension break 45 degree line and angle when viewed from neighboring property at 46 that had most of the concerns about the extension. All the properties in this part of the uh, street are positioned in the east-west direction, benefiting from the direct sunlight uh, at midday or even earlier. And we have created true to life illustrations of how the sun is affecting uh, the properties. And there is no um, effect of the uh, extension uh, in regard to loss of light uh, when the, when you're looking at the illustrations. Uh, the uh, roof is also is mirroring, or the extension is mirroring the uh, neighbor's roof. And the, uh, there is claim or a concern being made by the neighbor on the other side, on the northern side of the property, uh, on the southern side of the property at number 450 Berkshire Road. Uh, in regard to creating a terracing effect and the loss of light to the art studio. Uh, Henry Town Council will be aware that the number 50 has recently received a planning permission to further extend their detached property towards to uh, my client's house and uh, have a big, deep cable end uh, towards to my neighbour, result resulting in its own loss of light and also affecting uh, my client. Uh, the uh, the property... Ms. Pavelson, I'm yes. sorry, you're out of time now. But is there anything more you want to quickly say before we throw this out to councillors for questions? Last, uh, comment is that the proposal addresses all relevant concerns raised and we do seek approval uh, for the proposed extension. And uh, we do need the and family who lives in the property would ideally would appreciate the extra living space because a big family with a lot of children. Thank you. Um, councillors, do you have any questions at all? Yes, um, Councillor Arlett, please. Uh, yes, I, I did look all your at all your plans and all your elevations and all your 45 degree lines, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. But it did show in the winter with your angle that the, um, the neighbour at 46 would lose a certain amount of sunlight. And that was shown on, on one of your uh, elevation drawings. Uh, the sunlight is uh, at 11 o'clock, the sun turns around the corner and the first glimpse of uh, sun is taken away from number 50, Berkshire Road, that extends further from uh, the proposed extension at number 48. And the biggest impact is, of course, caused by the zone tree and by the two metre high fence, which creates a lot of shadow uh, in the garden during the winter solstice. Okay, thank you. Any other um, questions? Yes, Councillor Gavishak. It was, uh, thank you, Chair. It was really, um, you know, the last comment that, that you made about the terracing effect. Um, uh, one of the comments on the website from the neighbour has talked about, you know, stepping back the, um, uh, the extension so that it doesn't look like a terrace. Um, I was just wondering what your views on that were. Thank you. Uh, we have studied the most of the buildings in Berkshire Road and I even live myself very close so I walk past that road most days and most of the houses have got uh, built, they've been built very close to each other and our uh, proposed uh, development that mirrors the uh, semi detached house, I think it's in line with the other houses on the road. I think the biggest issue is that the, the detached property number 50 is already uh, filled out their own plot on the land and their extension that's going, I think, metre away from our proposed uh, extension uh, will affect, I think, uh, the street scene more than our uh, uh, hipped roof uh, uh, development. And the issue is also that the, uh, the house is very small. It's a semi-detached property and there is no space upstairs. So if we take further meter away, uh, there will be no usable space uh, for bathrooms or extra bedrooms that this family desperately needs. Okay. Yes, Councillor Plants. 
I was just going to say, uh, you know, thank you very much for taking the time to present. But I just, uh, with all the reference in the applications number 50 and surrounding properties, the simple fact is they're detached. You know, this is a semi detached house you're building directly onto impact a neighbor's, a neighbor's house. It's, you know, and there's a lot of talk about a, you know, fence height and a tree height, but in comparison to the height of extension, I must admit they pale in significance to that. Any relevance of your, you know, the fence being the issue of a completely overbearing extension down a garden, I find to be, I find to be quite perplexing. And then to compare that to a house which is completely detached and set down the street, but one, again, it's you know, it's different. If this was a completely self-detached plot, I might, I might understand. But being a semi-detached, I'm not sure it changes how I feel on it. But thank you for taking the time. Okay, it's a shame because I'm very uh, sad that I wasn't able to present the presentation because it really... Yeah, Miss Paverson, did you actually inform the planning officer that you wanted to actually make a physical presentation on uh, the screen? I'm, not, I'm very sorry about that. I never yeah. realised So that. thank you. We'll have to move on now. Thank you. Um, okay, so next on our screen, if you wouldn't mind switching your screen off now, Miss Paverson, I'd be grateful. Thank you. Chair Chairman Richard Guy is back, or he was back. Oh, where's he gone? Thank well. you. <clears throat> um, Richard Guy, let's have another go. Richard Guy? No, okay, we'll, we'll try again. <laughs> so the next I have, please, is uh, Mr. Nick Rain. Uh, hello, Good Mr. Evening. Rain. Hello. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. If, if uh, you... Thanks very much for uh, for having me. Thanks for all you do for. That's for okay. If you wouldn't mind just um, introducing yourself briefly and letting yes. us know which item you're speaking to, and then whenever you're ready. Thank you very much. Uh, my name is Nick Rain. Uh, I'm objecting to the planning application, householder application P twenty slash S four eight nine one. This is. Uh, proposal for a swimming pool to be constructed within the conservation area at 18 St Andrews Road. My wife and I own Wayside which is uh, uh, immediately to the west of the property and we object both as owners of Wayside and as Henley residents. Uh, Wayside as I say lies immediately west of the application site. It's actually built off the alleyway wall which separates the two properties. Uh, the pool, the swimming pool planned, will be less than three metres, 10 feet, from the front of the wayside. And by referring to the front, that's important to us because wayside is quite unusual in its construction. Uh, it's two up and two down, it's tiny. It's two up, two down, nothing special there, but it's only a single room in depth. In addition, it has no windows, uh, no doors at the rear. So in other words, my point is that the entire aspect of Wayside is towards the front. So when the pool is in use, uh, there are no back rooms to which to retreat to, to, uh, to take uh, relief. Uh, there are no windows, uh, there's no opportunity of closing windows at the front of the house and opening those at the back because there are none at the back. Uh, there are photographs which I've put on the planning portal in support of our uh, objection uh, which hopefully uh, illustrate what we're uh, talking about. But as I say, given the pool will be less than uh, three metres away, the, uh, the impact of the pool will be relentless. And when it's used at night with its noise and lighting, it will be quite overpowering. Uh, so uh, in conclusion on this part, uh, our, uh, we feel that uh, the amenity of Wayside would be considerably impaired. Um, we also have concerns in our sort of wider role as Henley residents, and this is in respect of the harm that will be caused to the character and appearance of the conservation area. 18 St Andrews Road, the application site, has a wooded garden which provides much of the character in this prominent part of the conservation area. The pool is immediately surrounded by substantial horse chestnuts plus other large trees, and they're very close indeed to the edge of the pool. And during construction, we fear that the roots of the trees will be damaged. And once the pool is in use with shading created by the trees and leaf litter blocking filters and uh, pump, there will be pressure to prune or possibly even fell the trees. Uh, coupled with the disturbance from noise and lighting at night time, we fear the character and appearance of the conservation area will be lost. Uh, and certainly it would be hard to see how the construction of a swimming pool 
in this location will either conserve or enhance the con conservation area. So as such, we'd be most grateful if the Town Council could recommend refusal. Thank you. Many thanks, Mr. Rohn. If you would mind staying on, just in case councillors have uh, questions. Councillors, any questions for Mr. Rohn? No? Okay, many thanks, Mr. Rohn. Thank you. Of course, very welcome to, st to stay with us. Um, okay, next we have Charlotte Bodman. Uh, oh, hello there, councillors. Oh. It's actually Conrad Bodman, Charlotte's husband. Um, hello, here. Mr. Oh, Bodman. Hello. If you wouldn't mind just letting us know which item you're speaking to and then whenever you're ready. Yes, good evening, everybody. Um, I'm speaking, um, objecting to um, the proposed planning application P20 slash um, S489 slash double H. Thank you. Um, yeah, just building on um, what Nick has said, um, I'm speaking on behalf of my family, that's Charlotte Bodman, Esther Bodman, and my son, Matthew Bodman, who all live at um, 44 Vicarage Road, which is, um, as you look at it, on the right-hand side of the Wayhouse property. Um, our property directly um, overlooks the proposed um, swimming pool. So we have um, thought about this carefully, and we have a number of objections. Um, I think one of the key objections for us is about the around the location of the pump room, which is not indicated kind of on the plans currently. Um, we are concerned about the noise from that pump room. Um, if it's located at the end of the garden where the current sheds are, that will be approximately four and a half meters away from our um, living room and bedroom windows. Um, and not much further away from both of our children's bedrooms. So we're very concerned about the noise from the, the, the pump and want to have reassurance that that pump won't be located near any of the residential properties if this planning permission, planning application is approved. Um, we're also concerned um, more generally about the damage to the um, trees that Nick's referred to. Uh, we feel that any excavation to the site will damage the roots um, and if those uh, trees have to be removed, which we think they inevitably will do, um, that will um, reduce, um, I mean, at, at the moment they're creating a very uh, strong kind of acoustic barrier, um, preventing any sound um, from, from the property. And we think that um, you know, any noise from the pool and pump will be um, ex ex exacerbated if the trees are removed. Um, finally, on the plan, there's no lighting kind of indicated either in the swimming pool or around the pool um, paving kind of area and we're concerned that there will ultimately be lighting in this space that will have to be illuminated for safety reasons at night um, and that that light will lead to an increasing urbanization of what is a very beautiful kind of conservation area and it's currently a green space at the moment so I think there's some um, concern in general for the residents of Henley around the amenity the loss of amenity in that natural environment currently. Um, so those are the three uh, reasons on which um, myself and my family are injecting. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Bodman. Um, any questions, councillors? No, okay, thank you so much, Mr. Bodman. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Okay, so let's have one more go, Mr. Richard Guy. On mute. No. No, he's um he's he's gone, I think. Okay, never mind. We'll um we'll have to move on, councillors. Okay, so that concludes the um public participation section of the meeting. Apologies, so, Madam Chair, for being a few minutes late. I was dealing with a problem in the US. <laughs> That's okay, Councillor Romans. Thanks for joining us. Um, okay, let's move on to the next item on our agenda, which is plans amended. Um, and as always, I will, it's on page 13, I will be asking Jodie for her observations uh, prior to any receiving any proposals. Jodie, um, the next one is P20 S2395 Householder, and it's for 48 Berkshire Road. Uh, thank you. So some changes have been made to address some of the issues previously raised um, by the committee. Uh, this includes moving the double storey extension away from the boundary and introducing a hip roof on the extension. However, in my opinion, more could be done to uh, limit the impact on the neighbouring um, properties and the character and appearance of the 
existing dwelling and surrounding area, um, specifically by stepping um, the first floor element further away from the boundary. Thank you. Thank you. Can, any proposals from councillors, please? Yes, Councillor Plant. Uh, refusal uh, from me. I, I can see that they, you know, have you know, work to make some amendments, but fundamentally it kind of riles me in a number of ways. Yeah, clearly they've just bought a house too small, number one. Um, but it's a semi-detached house, you know, making an alteration like this and bearing reference to properties that have no relevance to it, such as number 50, just seem crazy. It is unneighbourly. It's still overdevelopment of the plot that it is, um, you know, making reference to the height of the two-storey extension, which is going to be almost threefold that of the fence, just seems uh, seems crazy. Uh, and say that an ash tree is a problem, whereas the development isn't, again, seems somewhat somewhat lunacy, but that's just my proposal. Okay, is that a seconded? Councillor Hamilton, thank you. Would any other councillor like to speak? No, I see none. So let's put this motion to the vote. The motion is for refusal. All those in favour? All those against? Okay, that's carried. Thank you. So the next item we have on the agenda is P20 S4181. It's a full application and it's for 136 Reading Road, Jody. Um, so the amendments uh, for the first floor north facing windows to be obscure glazed and fixed shut and cycle stands to be added to the front garden. Um, these amendments are proposed to address the concerns of the neighbour number 134 on issues raised by the highways officer. Um, but I wouldn't think that they would um, meet your concerns previously raised. Thank you. Thank you, um, Jodie. Uh, do we have any proposals from councillors, please? Yes, Councillor Gavishak. Muted. Sorry, I apologise. Um, I suggest that we, I, I propose that we uh, refuse on the same grounds that we, we did before. Um, the loss of the essential community facility and insufficient street parking, even though we possibly welcome the bicycle sheds. But um, so I propose refusal. Thank you. Thank you. Is that a second dish? Councillor Romans, thank you. Would any other councillor like to speak? No. OK, let's put this to the vote then. The, um, the proposal is for refusal. All those in favour? All those against? and Councillor Plants abstaining. Thank you, that's carried. The next item we have on the agenda is P20 S4229 and it's a householder application. And it's for 146 Reading Road. Jodie. I don't have any comments for this one. You recommended approval last time. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Uh, councillors, any proposals, please? Yes, Councillor Plant. Yeah, approval again. Seconded, Councillor Gavishak, thank you. Would any other councillor like to speak? Okay, let's put this motion to the vote then. So the motion is for approval, all those in favour? Thank you, that's carried unanimously. Over the page, and a new item on the agenda, which is plans new. Um, so we have P20 S4546, it's a listed building application and it's for 78 New Streets, Jodie. Um, so I've got concerns over um, the complete replacement of the front windows, um, the loss of the original fenestration and the impact of this on the character of the listed building. Thank you. Councillor Plant, you have a proposal. Did the conservation officer just not respond to this one? I couldn't. Or they haven't I... responded yet. So okay, they haven't responded yet. Okay, fine. Yeah. Yeah. Well. That's the Gavishak. Well, my, <clears throat> my sort of eyes lit up when I read the headline for this. Solid timber heritage range windows. Normally we would be in there with <clears throat> both of our boots saying, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, but I... I suggest we recommend refusal until 
the conservation of her has spoken. Because, yes, Jodie is absolutely right, but this will change the character of a listed building in New Street, and we shouldn't do anything to actually aid it um, prior to the conservation officer speaking. So I propose refusal until the conservation officer has spoken. Thank you. Thank you. Is that seconded, Councillor Plant? Thank you. Would any other councillor like to speak? No, let's put this to the vote then. Um, all those in favour of refusal? All those against? And Councillor Arlett is abstaining. Thank you. Let's move on to the next item, which is P20S4568, and it's a householder application. Um, and it's the old school house Homelands Way. Jodie. Um, I didn't have any objections in principle to this, but there are very limited or any, uh, in fact, details of the design of the sliding gate. Yes, thank you. Uh, Councillor Plant. Um, I was going to propose that they come back with actual designs of the sliding gate. And uh, I think it's this one that I read. That I'm not even sure that they've negotiated landowners permission from the area of land that they're going to use for parking and access, I believe, called Normanstead. Um, which is one of the things that obviously is, isn't a planning matter, but they would need in order to gain use of it anyway. So I suggest that potentially mm -hmm. they come back with A, a design of the gate and B, consent to actually use that access. Any other observations, councillors? Yes, Councillor Gavishak. Yeah, I would agree with Lawrence. Lawrence, was that a proposal for refusal at the moment? Yes. Yeah, okay, thank you. I'll second that. That's right. They they should come back with designs and also the permission of the um, the, uh, uh, of the, you know, the owner of the land, which presumably might be OCC. No, it's it's joint access, I think, between yeah, six residents already or seven residents okay. already. Yep. OK. Yeah, OK. Thanks. Would any other councillor like to speak? Yes, Councillor Arlett. Yeah, I, I wouldn't have thought the second item put forward would be a planning reason for refusal that would be entirely up to yeah no uh, i think i think council plant did mention that already yeah uh, um sorry jody um you do need to serve notice on any any That's landowner right. that where it's not on your land so i can check that um before i submit the comments and if, if they haven't done that then i can put it in mm. the comment Something I did actually want to mention to councillors is, I mean, the work has actually already been done. Apart from the gate being installed, all of the work has been done. Um, and my concern with this one is that uh, school children from Trinity use that road to walk to the swimming pool. Um, and um, when, you're, when they're primary school children, it's very, very difficult to keep them under control. And, and even though you've got someone at the front of the, of the line and someone in the middle and someone at the back, some of them can just make a bolt for it, you know, and just run out in front. So that, that is a concern for me. And when we, um, when we, after we put this to the vote, if, if it turns out that, you know, we do want to go for refusal, I'd be really grateful, Jodie, if you could add those comments in as well. Do councillors agree? Yeah. They're allowed to put a fence in now up to one metre. It's only above one metre that they need planning for. So the fact that they've started the works, so they could tidy it up with a small one metre fence without planning permission in order to make it safe. Mm. And it is a fairly quiet road, to be honest. Yes, it is. It is indeed. But it's, it's not quiet when you've got 30 children um, <laughs> walking along it. Being busy. Yeah. OK. Uh, so we've got a proposal for refusal until we have more information. It's been seconded. Would any other councillor like to speak? No? Okay. Um, all those in favour then of refusal? Thank you. All those against? Thank you. That's carried. <coughs> Moving along then to the next application, we've got P20 S4659 slash listed building consent. Uh, sought for the Red Line Hotel on Hart Street. Jodie. Uh, so I just wanted to know um, the holding objection from the conservation officer due to insufficient information as it stands. Um, that was just my note. Thank you. 
Thank you. Councillors. Yes, Councillor Orlitz. Uh, yes, Chairman. I'm going to support this subject to the Conservation Officer's approval. I don't think we need to do anything other than, than that. I've read, I've read all the reports and I would have imagined that the, uh, uh, that the owner of the, the property will be working with a Conservation uh, Officer. But I, I don't see any need for it to come back. Um, yeah, they seem to be in control now of what's going on. They seem to be speaking with the conservation officers, planning officers. So um, I would propose no objection to this subject to the conservation officers' approval. Okay, thank you. Councillor Councillor Gavishuk, thank you. Any other councillor like to speak? No. Okay, let's put this to the vote then. And uh, the motion is for approval, subject to the conservation officer's comments. All those in favour? Thank you. That's carried. And the next one we have on our agenda is P20 S4678. It's a listed building and it's for the Malt House 45 New Street. Jodie. Um, so the location of the distribution box is um, quite prominent on this listed building. I'd question whether they did consider more discrete locations um, to reduce the impact of the heritage asset. Thank you. Thank you. Councillors, any observations, please? Any proposals? Councillor Gavishak? Well, I think we reiterate what we, so what we said for the last planning application, but... Uh, Sorry, proposal for approval uh, subject to the conservation officer's comments. That's all. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Is that a seconded? Councillor Hamilton, thank you. Any, would any other councillor like to speak? <clears throat> no, okay, let's put this to the vote then. All those in favour of approval subject to the conservation officer. All those in favour? All those against? Thank you, that's carried. Right, let's move on to the next one, which is P20 S4749, and it's for um, advertising for 11 Marketplace, Jodie. And so the advertisement could be more sympathetic to its location within the conservation area. However, it's not an overly prominent location um, and conditions could be um, put in place to control the illumination. Um, so. Yeah, I don't have overriding concerns. Thank you. Councillor Plants? Uh, even taking into account what Jodie said, yes, it's next to Majestic with huge, great illuminated screens already. Um, so, you know, if it was in a more sensitive location, possibly, but otherwise I think it's absolutely fine. Thank you. Um, is that a seconded? Yeah. Yes, Councillor Gavishak, thank you. Would any other councillor like to speak? No, let's put this to the vote then. So the uh, the motion is for approval. All those in favour? Thank you, that's carried. Okay, let's turn over the page, councillors, um, to page 16. And we have P20S4H24. It's a full application and it's for 18 Duke Street. Jodie. Um, so the uh, ground floor has um, change of use to retail, which... It was done under a permitted development and it's currently under construction um, and they're proposing to change um, the second two floors uh, to five new one and two bed flats. It's located within the air quality management area. Um, I do note that the air quality office has no objection, some subject to a number of conditions. However, um, the waste officer has a holding objection um, and they, they're worried about um, issues on Tuns Lane. Um, I've also got concerns with this in terms of um, increased pressure on parking from the development. Thank you, Jodie. Yes, Councillor Plants. Oh, flat out, no. <laughs> um, yeah, you know, I actually worked there for almost three years uh, when it was back in line before they moved. And, you know, it, it's a good site. It works perfectly for central offices or businesses like we have in other areas of the town. You know, if we're going to go and reject the dentist out in 136 Reading Road, then I think this is a surefire no. And if you read into the waste report or as much as you already do know the situation on Tuns Lane, it can't take any more. It barely handles the bins it's got there at the moment. And someone's had to put in storage boxes and all sorts of stuff. 
stuff where we don't need to make an already bad situation much worse. And, you know, the waste uh, officer, you know, basically there's no way that that area will meet the waste concerns. So it's no, no, and no. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Councillor Plants. Is that seconded? Yes, Councillor Gavishak. Thank you. Would any other councillor like to speak? Well, sorry. Yes, yes go ahead. Sorry, just for me, I mean, Lawrence has summed it up absolutely. I mean, Tonsland is a problem from the waste there, point of view. So, uh, yep, absolutely. No. Yeah. Jodie. To add in about parking. Good luck with that. <laughs> and for reasons for refusal, I'm just trying to. <laughs> yes, of course. Yeah. Yes, as well. Okay. <laughs> yeah, thank you. All right, thank you. Um, and would any other councillor like to speak? No, nope. okay, let's uh, put this to the vote then. The motion is for a refusal, all those in favour? All those against? And Councillor Arlett abstaining, thank you. That's carried. So the next item on the agenda is P20S4829. It's a householder application and it's for 23 Grace Road, Jodie. I didn't have any comments for this one. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Councillors, maybe to you. Councillor Gavishak. Propose acceptance. Thank you. Is that seconded? Councillor Plant, thank you. Would any other councillor like to speak? No, let's put this to the motion then. So the motion is for approval. All those in favour? Thank you. That's carried unanimously. So the next item on the agenda is P20 S4832, it's a full application and it's land to the rear of 57 to 59 of the bull on Belt Street. Jodie. Um, yeah, so you've got um, concerns over the impact on parking and um, this would result in the removal of car parking used for the existing office. I know <coughs> in the design access statement submitted as part of the application, um, they state that this has been used this way um, for the last six months uh, for customers during the COVID um, pandemic and that the car park um, was uh, underused. Um, they're, they're saying that the, there'll be no changes to the proposed northern car park, which would still be used for office and staff parking. Um, uh, restrictive conditions could be placed on this in terms of opening times to limit noise and impact on neighbouring properties. Thank you. Thank you, Jodie. Councillors, uh, who would like to start? Councillor Hamilton. Um, in principle, I haven't got a problem with this, but I do think we should put a time limit on it because of the um, neighbours' concerns, as it were, uh, and they largely do with noise. But so, um, yeah, I'm, I'm in favour of it, but with a time, time limit. I would suggest 11 o'clock, but um, so the councillors might say no. Thank you. Um, is, so that's for approval subject to time conditions. Is that seconded? Yes, Councillor Plant. Did you wish to speak, Councillor Plant? Uh, yeah, I, I, you know, I have, did use it quite a lot in between the two lockdowns when we could, uh, especially because obviously sitting outside was far, far safer than sitting inside. And the, the, I thought it worked well. You know, it was their car park before for their own office because the seating area is basically their old office courtyard. So I see no reason as long as we can agree on a time constraint that does work well. Not sure if 11 is slightly too late unless they're really going to control the noise outside as it were if they don't control the noise the police will just be around with nuisance orders anyway so yeah I, I think as well I think the neighbours were talking about specifically as well amplified noise yeah um put a ban on outside it's, music it's, though in any yeah yeah it, precisely um okay so um uh, would any other council like to speak to this one no okay right let's put this to the vote then so um it's for approval, um, subject to those conditions that we have mentioned. Councillor Hamilton, you were happy with the amplified addition to the... I, yeah, I'll just say 11 o'clock then, for the, just to put it to the vote, as it were. Yeah, OK. Yeah. All, those, all those in favour? All those against? OK, that's carried. Thank you. Um, okay, so next up we have P20S4836 and it's a householder application for 37 Manor Road. Jodie. And for this one, thank you. Okay, thank you. Councillors. Yes, Councillor Gavishak. 
Proposed acceptance. Is that seconded? Yeah. Councillor, oh, lots of acceptances. Thank you. We'll go for Councillor Romans. Would any other councillor like to speak? No, let's put this to the vote then. The motion is for approval. All those in favour? Thank you, that's carried. Um, so the next item we have on the agenda is P20 S4843. It's a listed building consents um, for the Malt House 45 New Streets. Jody. Uh, no objection subject to the acceptance from the conservation officer. Thank you. Councillors? Yes, Councillor Plant? Yeah, exactly that. Yeah, approval in line with. Okay, so that's seconded. Councillor Gavishak, thank you. Would any other councillor like to speak? No, let's put this to the vote then. The motion is for approval subject to the um, satisfaction of the conservation officer. All those in favour? Thank you, that's carried. The next two I will take together as they are of the same property. So we've got P20 S4862 and P20 S4863. The first is for householder and the other one is for listed building consent. 11 New Street, Jodie. Um, I do have concerns over the design of the new conservatory. Um, it would cross cut the elevation and pinch upon the first floor windows. It has lack of subservience or design response to the listed building. But I note that it's at the rear of the property. Thank you. Thank you, councillors. Yes, councillor Plants. <laughs> Gonna sound terrible. I actually quite like the design. <laughs> 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 Granted, it's very different to the old one, but I've just written yes, lovely design. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so your proposal is for approval. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Councillor Gavishak. Seconding. Well, well, apart from councillors, plants, you know, uh, taste comment. Um, I agree. <laughs> I agree with him. Actually, I'm sorry, Jody. Um, I think that it's a nice design. What sort of what do we know, Jody? We're we're not the experts, but yes, I'll second. I'll second this uh, proposal. Thank you. Thank you. Would any other councillor like to speak? No. Okay. Let's put this to the vote then. The motion is for approval. All those in favour? Thank you. That's carried. Okay, let's move over the page to page 17 and it's P20 S4866. It's a householder application for Greenacres Elizabeth Road. Jodie. I didn't have any comments for this one. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Plants. Uh, I think I've got my notes right. I'd like to see a light study for Nine Hobbs End uh, because it does sound like it could be fairly detrimental to that house, but I must admit I don't know the exact... Um, site and how they react together but it's you know that resident seems particularly concerned that his property is going to be fairly heavily impacted by it. um so my before putting approval for yes i'd like to see a light study for them unless anyone else knows the situation better would any other councillors be able to assist any other councillors who live around that area at all any any observations at all no okay so mm -hmm. Uh, the, the motion, I understand, is for uh, refusal um, subject to uh, perhaps a light study or something for that particular neighbour. Is yeah. that seconded? Yes, Councillor Hamilton, thank you. Would any other councillor like to speak? Yes, Councillor Arlett. Yeah, I, I would speak against this. You, you know, I almost get fed up when people talk, start talking about... Um, light you know amount of light that is leaking from a from a window for from an extension you know at the end of the day people have curtains i believe or blinds and that overcomes any small problem so i don't believe that uh, you know the reason put forward would would, would, would never win uh, an appeal anyway uh, if it was to go there um, i'm sorry about that so um, yeah, sure. I, I won't be supporting the application or the proposal okay thank you um, okay, well, we have a proposal and it's refusal subject to more information. Um, it's been seconded, so let's put this to the vote and it's for uh, refusal. All those in favour? All those against? Okay, it's carried, thank you. 
Okay, let's move on to the next one, which is P20S4876. It's a full application and it's for Swiss Farm Caravan Park, Marlow Road. Jodie. So the impact on the area of outstanding natural beauty is the key consideration. Um, the national planning policy framework requires that great weight is given to conserving and enhancing the landscape um, and the beauty of the AOMB, and it's given the highest status of protection. Um, I note that the applicant has responded to pre-application advice from <coughs> DC, and they've reduced uh, the number of lodges from 40 to 24. Um, I consider that there is some visual containment afforded to the site um, through vegetation and topography, um, but I would probably ask for, that there's further boundary screening um, to reduce the wider impact on the AOMB. Um, also, the planning officer has requested that it's conditioned so that these aren't in the <coughs> units of accommodation. Um, I also have some concerns over the increase in traffic uh, to and from the site. Thank you. Thank you. Jodie, just before we go um, to, to the councillors, can I ask a quick question? I was trying to search in the information whether they had, have actually got alternative provision for camping. Mm, I did anybody I see that in there? That. I didn't. Councillor Hamilton, did you, did you answer that one? Yeah, I understand that even if they were to build 24, then half of their land would still be left for camping. Okay, thank you. Thank in, you for that, Councillor Hamilton. Canvas camping or whatever you want to call it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yes. Councillor Plant, you have, yeah. you have a proposal, Councillor Plants. I'm all for no on this one. I'm yeah, not not supporting local business as it were, but it, it's already a great business as camping as is. I think this is a slippery slope once we start putting further hard standing and semi-permanent slash permanent lodges down that we are just building out and out and out which i know we're doing in some areas anyway but it's not already included in a site for development you know we're not absolutely desperate for the numbers right now let's let's keep it as it is let's maintain our green space you know this is just an opportunity for us to build on another perfectly pleasant field which is already providing a business purpose to the town it's great for tourism it's great for visitors uh, they've got a lovely facility there i don't believe that they need to build out further uh concrete otherwise Thank you. Okay, thank you, Councillor Plants. Uh, do we have a seconder for refusal? Councillor Gavishak, thank you. Would you like to speak, Councillor Gavishak? Um, no, I think uh, Councillor Plants has summed up all the reasons for it. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Would any other councillor like to speak? No, I see none, so let's put this to the vote then. The motion is for refusal. All those in favour? All those against and councillor Arla is abstaining. abstaining okay thank you okay that's carried thank you and the next item on the agenda is um, p20 s4888 and it's a householder application field house 43 deanfield avenue jody um, so this is to remove um, condition five and vary condition two. Um, these conditions were in place to restrict the use of the remaining flat roof. Um, so it cannot be used to, in order to protect um, the privacy of neighbours 41 and 45. And I think these should remain to ensure that's protected. Thank you. Thank you. Councillors. Any proposals? Councillor Gavishak? Uh, propose acceptance, then. It, but not remove condition five. Yeah, <clears throat> I agree. If, okay. If you, have, if you have to take that amendment. Yeah. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Propose acceptance, but not remove condition five. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Right. Uh, so that's been seconded. Would any other councillor like to speak? No, okay, let's put this to the vote then. So the motion is for approval um, with the exception of um, not removing the re remo <laughs> condition five, the removal of condition five. <laughs> okay, all those in favor, please raise your hands. Thank you, that's carried. 
And the next item on the agenda is P20 S4891. It's a household application and it's for 18 St Andrews Road. Jodie. Just had concerns over the impact of the, on the existing trees located within the conservation area. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, Councillor Hamilton. Yeah, I'm going to recommend refusal on this. Um, it's not the right space for a swimming pool um, on planning grounds. It's unneighbourly and uh, I'm worried about the trees as well. So I so propose. OK, thank you. Is that seconded? Councillor Gavishak, thank you. Would any other uh, councillor... Yeah. Would you like to speak as well, Councillor Gavishak? Yeah, I'll just add a, add a few more comments. Completely agree with what Councillor Hamilton has said. Um, um, there are overwhelming objections to this, and it really needs investigating thoroughly. If you are going to dig swimming pool down, then it, it, it's going to affect the, you know, the roots of the trees. And also proposed lighting in, in the area, which, which, which all of the speakers this evening referred to, and also the noise from the pump room as well. Um, uh, so therefore there are significant problem issues with this planning application. Yeah, thank you. Would any other councillor like to speak? No, okay, so let's put this to the vote then. So the motion is for refusal. It's been seconded. All those in favour? All those against? And Councillor Ollett abstaining. Thank you. Thank you. Next on the agenda is P20 S4911 and it's a householder application and it's for 27 Nicholas Road, Jodie. Um, so this is a single storey studio um, at the back of the garden. It does protrude um, above the existing fence, um, but the property and the neighbouring plots are pretty generous. Um, I do have concerns over the impact on the existing trees though. Thank you. Councillors? Yes, Councillor Plants? I was going to go approval as long as all the trees are kept safe as where it's nice that they've taken the amendments and removed the windows to stop the overlooking privacy issues that they had beforehand. Um, otherwise, I don't see any objections. OK, is that seconded? Councillor Hamilton, thank you. Would any other councillor like to speak? Councillor Arlett? Yes, Chairman, and unless any other information has come in the last day, um, I would like to know what the studio is going to be used for. Um, and is it just going to be used for the, the residents of the house or would it be used for something else? And that is a bit concerned to one of the neighbours as well. Um, did someone say the, the windows had been removed from overlooking the neighbour? Did, did I hear? I yeah, I on the amended oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. So I'm I'm concerned actually when I see the worm studio with a big open space, exactly what will what will be there, um, because you wouldn't want it to be used, dare I say, for keep fit classes or whatever, or art classes and just numerous cars parked outside the uh, the property. So before I was to uh, to vote on that, I'd uh, I'd like that answered. Jodie. Yeah. I'm just brought up the statement um, and it's saying a home studio to allow residents to work from home. Um, I know what it says. And you can place a condition on there to ensure that it's not. Are you, you hoping they're going to set something it's, else? It's ancillary, to, <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's ancillary to the main house if you want to. If that's added into Council Plants um, yeah. motion. Happy to. Okay, Please so Council Plants. Sorry, Councillor Hamilton. Mm. Councillor um, Hamilton, are you happy with that? Yeah, conducive to home working. Yes, okay. All right, so um, would any other councillor like to speak before we put this to the vote? No, okay, so the, um, the motion is for approval with conditions um, as laid out, minute taker, you've got them noted, haven't you? <laughs> um, all those in favour? Um, all those against? All those abstaining. Thank you. <coughs> That's Ken, what, have, Thank you. what have you got against home fitness classes? Uh, the amount of vehicles on um, that travel to the property. 
Okay. At the end of the at the end of the day, it's, it's a property. It's not a um, a business, or it shouldn't be a business. Mm. And that's the point I'm making. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Let's move on. Um, so the next one we've got um, is actually a duplicate, isn't it, Jody? Yeah. Okay. So we've already discussed this one on the on the first part of the agenda. So let's move on to P21S0007. It's a listed building for 70 Marketplace, and I'll take it together with the um, the the one over, which is a full application, and it's for 70 Marketplace. Jody. Um, so this is a Grade Two listed building uh, located within the conservation area. Although I don't have any concerns, um, I would say again, subject to uh, the satisfaction of the conservation officer over the proposed materials. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Plant. Yeah, exactly that. Approval. It's uh, in line with conservation. This thing is close to falling down. If you ever walk behind it, it's lucky it's still standing. But... OK, thank you. Is that seconded? Councillor Gavishak, thank you. Would any other councillor like to speak? No, let's put this to the vote then. All those in favour of approval? All those against? Councillor Gavishak abstaining. Oh, sorry, no, four. 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 Okay, thank you. That's unanimous Apologies. then. Thank you. Yep. That's carried. Uh, right, so the next item on the agenda is P20S0036. It's a listed building um, and it's for our very own town hall. I think we've all got an interest. Very <laughs> <No>, did you? <laughs> <laughs> I submit the application. I don't think it's probably right for me to. No, did make you want comments. to make any comments about your own reports? <laughs> no, not really. Okay, thank <laughs> you, Gavishak. Right. I think it's normal practice on these things to actually um, not make any comment and allow the uh, district council to decide. Um, because it's our own application, it would be wrong for us to comment on it. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Gavishak. Um, so I propose so no comment. Yeah, okay. Is that seconded? Thank you, Councillor Arlott. Yeah, thank you. All, all those in favour? All those against? All those abstaining? <laughs> thank oh. you. That's carried. Um, so the next item on the agenda is uh, P21S0075, and it's a householder application, 48 St Mark's Road, Jodie. I didn't have any comments for this one. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Plant? Yes. <laughs> Approval. Seconded. Yes, seconded by Councillor Gavishak. Um, would any other councillor like to speak? No, let's put this to the vote then. The motion is for approval. All those in favour? Thank you. That's carried unanimously. Um, the next item we have on the agenda is P21S0117. It's a householder application and it's for 3 St Mark's Road. Uh, Jody. So the proposal resulted in a slightly larger two-storey extension and a wraparound single-storey extension. And it's proposing a number of roof lights on the single-storey element. Um, I have some concerns over the potential for adverse impact on the neighbouring properties amenity, but overall um except in principle thank you thank you jody can i just ask you quickly um did you have any comments about the extension of the basement i didn't have any comments about that no thank you just in relation to um the upward element thank you okay thank you uh councillors any proposals i propose no objection jim okay thank you Seconded, Councillor Plant. Okay, thank you. Would any other councillor like to speak? Okay, all those in favour, please raise your hands. Okay, thank you. That's carried unanimously. Their use of the term similar is quite a stretch. <laughs> <but apart from that. laughs> okay, P21 S0119, Householder Application, 6 West Street, Jody. Didn't have any comments for this one. Thank you, councillors. Uh, Councillor Gavshak. That was acceptance. Thank you. Is that a second, that. Councillor Plant? Yeah, thank you. Um, all those in favour? Thank you. That's carried unanimously. 
<clears throat> lots of count, lots of neighbours actually speaking out in favour, which was uh, quite refreshing. Support for that one. Oops. Okay, I'll take the next two together. Um, we've got P21S0173 and P21S0183. One's listed building and one's full, and it's for two to four Bell Street, Jodie. Um, I didn't have any uh, overall concerns with these two. Um, just noting uh, the potential for air quality issues in that area. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Plant. I like it. I think it's a good design. I think <laughs> the building's not exactly attractive as it is. And it's nice. You know, hopefully the restaurant opens and it thrives. It's nice to have a buzzing central square to the town. Um, I think the design's attractive. It's similar to what Copper Club have done and bits like that. But that would be my view. OK, thank you. Is that a seconded? Councillor Gavishak, thank you. Would, um, just, like to, would you like to speak, Councillor Gavishak? Yeah, just a quick comment. Okay. It's really to do with Jodie's uh, uh, quality comment. I mean, there are windows down Duke Street that are actually screwed closed as part of a planning uh, permission that they, they had no openable windows onto Duke Street because it is one of the worst polluted streets in, in Henley. So, uh, jokingly, I would say we'll allow the installation of openable shop front provided it's screwed closed. <laughs> but no, I, um, I, I think we've, we, we've got to be sensible about this. We have an air quality issue that's got to be solved, but it's not going to be solved by refusing this. So, uh, yeah. Let's go for it. Thank you. OK, thank you. Would any other councillor like to speak? No. OK, let's put this to the vote then. The motion is for acceptance. All those in favour? OK, that's carried. Thank you. Um, Chair, I yes. did say about 8.30 I, I was going to have to go. Um, and uh, so I'm sorry, I will leave the meeting now. I think you're still for it, so there's, so there's no problem from that point of view. Um, That's OK. But it looks from the agenda so far as though uh, Councillor Arlett's going to have his work cut out with call-ins. I think we've got about five at the moment. So, But I'll leave that to you to decide. Thank okay. you, Chair. Thank you. Thank you for attending. Thanks. OK, so let's move on to the next item on the agenda, councillors. Um, we've covered plans amended and plans new. Um, we move on to seven, which is objections, calling applications. Have I got any proposals? Yes, um, Councillor Plants. Everything that can abstain from. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, the, the, the three that I put down is uh, 18 Duke Street, um, the caravan parks and 18 St Andrews Road. I think all three of those, I think I think that's sufficient, actually. I'm not sure where Councillor Gavishep uh, mentioned another two, but I, I think all those three um, should be called in um, by, uh, by me, okay, if, you wish, if you wish to vote for those three. Yeah, OK. Um, should, Council Hamilton, sorry, did you want to speak? What about Berkshire Road? Did we call that in or has it already been called in? Um... um it's amended, isn't it? Yeah. I'm not sure if it is called in, actually. Let's have a look. I, I don't think, personally, I don't think that's worthy of calling in. That's my own view, but it's up to the town council. Yeah, I'd leave it to the original three. OK. All right, well, let's, let's put this to the vote then. Um, we've got a proposal for those three. Uh, is it seconded? Yeah, all those in favour? Yeah, OK, thank you. That's carried. I'll do that tomorrow. So you'll do that. Thank you. Um, so the next item on the agenda is uh, decision notices. <clears throat> Excuse me, it's just to list the decision notices that have come over from the planning authority. So that's noted. Thank you. Um, and we've got a permitted development rights application. Um, we've got five Cromwell Road. Jodie, can I just ask you, what does LDP stand for? Um, permitted development. So um, I don't know. It's definitely permitted development, but I don't yeah, know. Yeah, I, I just I didn't mean to look that up myself. But uh, and the next one is P20 S4882 10 Damer Gardens. So it's just to note those two. OK, 
Okay, thank you. Um, so next we have um, some reports from the Climate Emergency Working Group. And I'm very pleased to say that we do have the authors, the co-authors of the report, um, Claudia Claver and Patrick Fleming to give us some guidance on um, this, these, their reports. Many thanks for attending and thank you so much for your patience. Um, it's very much appreciated. Um, I'm just wondering which way around councillors would like to do this. Would you like to hear from the report authors first or would you like to hear from Jodie first? Councillors? Yes, Councillor Plant, what would you prefer? I think hear from them would be great, hear from them first. Okay, yeah, let's do that then. Hey. Whenever you're ready. Claudia, should I take this? Okay. So um, the Climate Emergency Working Group is a, a working group of this committee. Um, and we've been challenged with reducing the carbon footprint of the town. Uh, and that includes with quite a significant part of that footprint is building and built environment. Um, we've been looking at uh, improving energy efficiency standards in the housing in the area. And of course, a lot of that is retrofit to existing stock and what we've come up with, and the sort of generally nationally agreed figures, are 40 to 70,000 pounds to bring uh, an existing housing house to a net zero. And net zero is the objective for 2050. So bearing in mind that that's the cost of, develop, of, of taking our existing housing stock to net zero. Uh, the cost of building a new net zero house is roughly between 15 and 20. And I, I think it's coming down. It's more like 10 to 15,000 pounds more than building a normal house. Uh, these are figures for three to four bedroom houses. Um, we've got a couple of references there to two sites that, that we know of quite well. Uh, one of them is in South Wales, it's by Sarah Holmes. And the other one is by uh, Glencore, which is in Pritchett up in Kingston Bagpuis. And these are those, yeah, if you have the time, please do look at the videos on those because they're quite inspirational, I think. Um, the gist of it is that if, for ev if we're assuming that we build 300,000 houses a year, which is the government's target, um, the cost to this country of building substandard homes that means ones that aren't net, net zero is going to be roughly 10 billion a year. So we are storing up 10 billion a year of problems for ourselves. And I think that's the background to it. And I think what I'll do, because we have short of time and you've got still got more business after this. Um, I just want to say that uh, wh when Claudia started putting this paper together, we didn't have the information from the local plan. And in fact, the local plan inspector included a policy DES 10 in the local plan. And we particularly wanted to bring this to your attention because what they're doing is tightening up under the future home standard. They're tightening up building rates and the, the, the South Oxfordshire actually leads together with Oxford City, leads the country in applying some of those standards early. So now we have the new local plan, we're going to have any new development in this area, it's gonna to have to meet these standards. And to give you an idea, uh, the uh, DES 10 says that it's got to achieve any new development, uh, has got to achieve at least 40% reduction in carbon emissions compared with code, uh, the 2013 uh, uh, building regs. Uh, so that's quite an ask. Uh, and, uh, you know, thanks to the, uh, the, uh, the examination process, the inspector for, for including that, that policy. Um, this is going to increase to 50% uh, in 2026 and to net zero in 2030. So what we're trying to bring to your attention is that these are very significant figures and it's not obvious when you look at a planning application as to whether this is actually being achieved and we're, what, what we're asking is for three we're asking three things really 
One is that the, this planning committee is acquainted with what this really means in terms of new development. That includes uh, DES 8, the policy DES 8 actually applies to extensions and also to infill, uh, as well as to development sites. And what we're asking is that we somehow put in place some education training, webinars, whatever it is, that the Climate Emergency Working Group would be keen to work with Jody to try and bring in some sort of education so that we can not only help you to be aware of what the rules are and what's changing, but also I think what's really important is to make the developers aware because a lot of the development in Henley is done by small businesses, small firms, mm. and they can't be aware of what's happening, what the changes are. And they just, they, you know, they're too busy working. They don't want to have to spend time. So if we can bring the regulations to them, and if we can develop training materials and develop uh, some sort of a training course for them, and it can be, you know, for quite light touch, but just, just tell them how it is. Um, I think that what will happen is that you will be then wasting less time. It will effectively mean that the, pla the, 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 the plans that come to you will be compliant or be closer to compliant. And so that when these things come through, you know, the, 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 the we've got plans that are actually fit for purpose and also meet our objectives with the climate emergency in Henley of having a very energy efficient building stock and we save some of that 10 billion. And so that's the, 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 other, the other side of it. And this is a very important side for Jody. And I've been working with Jody on this is that what we want to do is include policies in our neighborhood plan. And we've started this, we started the work, but we feel that we need the mandate from the planning committee to say that, yes, you should do this. So what we're asking is the planning committee takes the report from the climate emergency working group and then actually mandates the us the neighborhood plans steering group to include those policies in the new revised neighborhood plan and this may be a bit sort of cart before the horse because as i said you know we've been with uh, ken uh, jody i and uh, and uh, rebecca have been working on these policies and working on putting these things in already um, but we feel that we've gone out on a limb a bit and that, that it does need a mandate from the planning committee to say yes do that uh, so so that's we're looking for there are three recommendations we're putting uh, for the first is that you you take account of des 8 and des 10 um, and that where you feel that a development is not energy efficient uh you that, that you flag that up uh, um to that end i did say that that i think that the that what it needs is a lot more information you can't be expected to do that without a lot more support and i think that's where the climate working group and with the help of the uh, jody as planning officer we can bring some of that support to you uh, the second one is that the, uh, the is using that material that we help you with to help developers and builders and small builders. So if we're developing training materials, we can actually use that and we can actually educate the general public. So if someone's thinking about putting an extension on, they can think, well, actually, I could build this better. Uh, so, so that's the 8.2. And then 8.3 the recommendation there is that well, that, that, that you tell us that's the neighborhood mm -hmm. plan steering group yes please put these policies in uh take account of what the climate emergency working group is saying uh, i know this sounds a bit odd because i'm on both of them but i think it's it should be formalized uh we shouldn't just go our own way mm -hmm. and i think it would be helpful to have that that's all it needs is that direction to tell us Yes, please include policies, which means that we maximise the, the, the effect of, of good development and good building practice in Henley uh, to reduce our carbon footprint. I think that, 
bearing in mind the amount of time we've got, I think that's probably uh, it's better that, that uh, we throw that open. Unless Claudia has something that you'd like to add, I think we throw it open to you for, for, for your questions on okay. this. Okay, thank you. Jodie, would you like to go first? Um, yeah, I just it was just a statement, really, um, just to be uh, realistic for what actually the planning committee um, can achieve um, with reference to the um, first recommendation um, and referring to policies DES 8 and DES 10, um, that these, own, these apply to new build residential houses, HMOs and developments of over um, a thousand metres squared. So, so there's not too many of these applications at each committee. Um, uh, the applicants and applications need to demonstrate how they comply with these policies anyway within an energy statement. Um, so I would be happy to consider these statements and report back um, my considerations to the planning committee so you can then take that forward within your recommendations. Um, with regards to DES 8, however, um, they don't need to include how um, they're going to be energy efficient in such an energy statement. Um, so I'm, I'm going to seek some further clarification from SODC um, planning policy team on how um, they're going to consider these applications against this policy. And I can report that back to you um, at the next planning committee. Um, I agree with Patrick in, with regards to further assistance and training, um, and this would be worthwhile going forward, and I'll, I'll explore that a bit more, um, and again report that back to you, and that would that would lead into producing um, materials um, to assist developers, and that could all all come together at, at once. Thank you. Okay, thank you, councillors. Any questions? Well, I, I would speak, but I'd like to listen to some of the other councillors first with their comments, because there's a lot of work gone into this. Yes, Councillor Plant. Oh, well, I'm not going to echo what Ken says. He does an absolutely fantastic amount of work, and it's, it's in the proposal here. Uh, I think if it is just a case of making sure the process is, is done properly, then completely in support of it. Um, Sorry that more of us can't do some of the heavy lifting or some more of the heavy lifting for you, but you, 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 know, you and the team are doing such a brilliant job at it at a rate that we simply wouldn't be able to achieve as councillors, you know, without, without members such as yourself who have an interest and a care and go to all sorts of shows and sit on basically everything to do with greener energy planning, transport, and most of the other, <laughs> most of the other things, you know, it, it's fantastic. Like, you know, a heartfelt thanks really. Councillor Hickard, yeah, I, I would love to say, actually, to be fair, um, I just chair the meetings. The, the work is done by the likes of the, uh, the non-councillors, uh, in particular, obviously, the likes of Patrick and, and Claudia. You know, they are the working bees that are doing all the work for the, or the majority for the, for the neighbour plan. I just go there as a the chairman and go through the agenda. Uh, and, and they're the ones that are uh, bringing all this information back to you. I'm just looking at the recommendations because the local plan has been adopted, although um, uh, there has been a, a complaint filed against it through, um, uh, yeah, I won't go into that. Um, but 8.1 really now is for, as it's been adopted and we're told now at planning, that is really up to SODC now to make sure that um, any plan application comes in, comes into DES 8 and, and DES 10. I, I believe that's, um, that's to uh, SODC. The 8.2, um, yes, we could um, guide uh, local developers, but again, they are, you know, when they put their applications in, they are going to have to put in, um, I can't remember the exact wording, but they, they are, going to have to show that they are working to all the all the items in um, I say des 8 and des 7, uh, 10 and others so you know that that will have to be shown on a on a plan application that would be my view and and the last one 8.3 this is where all the work is going at the moment on uh, 
on policies in the neighbourhood planned committee, which I say, you know, the, a lot of this is being done by Patrick uh, and, mm -hmm. and his group, uh, which obviously we're thankful for. Otherwise, it, it probably wouldn't get done. Obviously, Jode is doing a, you know, a major work on, on, on this as well. Um, but she does get a small dis dispensation of money for, for doing that, whereas Patrick doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I can only thank you three. So you know, my, my view, I say eight point one. I believe this is really down to um, down to SODC to uh, pursue this. Although we, you know, we can do work on it, but that's down to them. Um, eight point two. There again, SODC. It's all in the local plan, um, and that should be taking place on every application from now. I know it's one coming up tomorrow, which it was asked for. And, and as I say, the neighbourhood plan will, will continue um, doing, doing its policies. The thing I was going to say, Patrick, I was you know, going through the other agenda, it might not be uh, a need to do it tonight, was to go through the um, you know, EVCP um, points, because uh, obviously, obviously Oxfordshire County Council obviously doing a lot of work on that, or we're told they are. Um, yeah. Can we? Can we? Is it okay if we just do these one at a time? These two reports. Um, let, let's make it. Does any other councillor have um, anything to ask on this before we, um, before we make any sort of decisions at all? No. No. I mean, my my point really is. Um, I mean, from from chair of planning um, and as a, as a council as a whole. Um, and in light with what SODC are doing and what Oxfordshire County Council are doing, I think everything that you're asking for is really is is absolutely acceptable, reasonable. We're supposed to mirror exactly what the other what um, the other councils are doing. Um, the only the only the only question mark I have is what you've raised, Patrick, and what Jodie has raised, and that is for training. You know, us as councillors, we've really got to know what we're looking for so that we can actually. Um, pull it out in um, all of the um, observations that we make. Um, so I would, I would prefer to, to sort of have that training um, prior to making any sort of observations around those sorts of areas, um, just for good practice reasons, really. Um, I don't know if you have any feedback to those comments at all. Yeah, I'd agree with you. I think we need to do it from, a, uh, uh, from an educated standpoint. Um, and uh, and I'd agree. You know, I'm very happy to support Jody in anything that she finds out and she can do. Uh, I, I would say that we should go beyond the councillors and and not least because it's good publicity that if we can put it in the handy standard that councillors, you know, these are the new building standards and uh, uh, and and uh, have a call for for local businesses and the Henley but, Herald and the Henley Herald absolutely. <laughs> Yeah, I have to say, yeah, uh, in Green and Henley, we we hundred percent support the Henley Herald. Uh, yeah, she's done this proud. Um, so, so, so I I I would recommend. That, yeah, I should say, I think it would be helpful to have um, if Jody could investigate the the, the, the training aspect of it, mm. uh, as uh, so that essentially that that would be supporting. You know, that essentially is what what we're asking for under eight point one and eight point two. Is okay. the, the the more awareness uh, of it? Uh, Eight point three, I think, I, I feel is quite important, so that yeah. it legitimises the work that we're doing in the neighbourhood plan. Um, mm. um, Councillor Arlett, was there anything you wanted to say about uh, Eight point three before we vote on any of this? No, I'm fine. Absolutely fine on it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Would any other councillor like to speak before we make some proposals? No. Okay. So let's just deal with this um, in order as they come then. With 8.1, um, I would like to say that um, this is, a sub this is um, absolutely fine, subject to some training. Realistically, Jody and Patrick, how long do you think the training would take to come up with the materials and for, to get us all together to, to train the committee? That's the whole committee. So I've emailed SODC today and they should get back to me within two weeks. Um, so hopefully they can help out with this. Otherwise, um, I can look at it in more detail. So, should we say uh, within three next, months? Yeah, 
yeah, that's probably worthwhile. Okay, just to make sure that we've got all of the councillors. I mean, all of the councillors should do this training really because sometimes they sub as well. Okay, so my proposal then is for 8.1 um, that we uh, make this approval subject to um, training of um, officers and councillors uh, within three months. Councillor Plants, seconding. All those in favour? Thank you, that's carried. And 8.2, um, issuing guidance. Um, uh, for this one, um, I'm Jody. I mean, I'm hoping that SODC are going to come up with some some guidance, like they do, for instance, with the shopfront guide. You know, it should be just you know a policy that you can that guidance that you can take off their website and apply it. Do you have any guidance for us around there? Again, hopefully they'll um, clarify that for us. It was quite a late addition to the local plan modifications. Um, but yeah, again, I can I can let you know next time with regards to that. Okay, because I, I mean, I'd rather they the planning authority do the work than we do the work, quite <laughs> frankly, just purely because of officer time. Uh, uh, Jeremy, uh, Chairman, yeah. SODC would always do a planning seminar for us. If, yeah, if we, the... yeah, but we can get that done. Yeah, okay. But this one specifically with training materials that uh, mm. developers and residents can use, um, I prefer, I personally would prefer that that's done with SODC. Any comments, anyone? I'd be happy with that. Yeah. Okay, all yeah, right. Perhaps, yeah. Yeah, okay. So just for practical reasons, then um, we will recommend then 8.2 uh, that we refer this back to the planning authority SODC to come up with these materials, um, and um, we'll we'll um, I mean I'm quite happy to to get involved with this as well just to help um, our officers um, and make sure that this is is brought to um, the attention of of anyone who wants to use them um, when they make an application in Henley. Okay, all those in favour? Okay, thank you. That's carried. Um, and 8.3, um, I'd like to propose that we just take this as it is written. Um, do I have a seconder? Yep, thank you, Councillor Hamilton. All those in favour? Okay, that's carried. Thank you. I'd just like to thank Patrick and Claudia for their work. Thank you very much. Yes, indeed. Um, Patrick, are you, Claudia, I don't, you, obviously you are, you're not a co-author on this next report, are you? But um, are you staying for this next part, the EV charging? Yeah, okay. Patrick, are you um, speaking on behalf of the whole committee? Because I know oh, it was actually yes, authored I, by I, I, um, I Tony think, Hoskins, I, wasn't it? Yeah, I think I am, yes. Yeah, um, okay. So this is primarily Tony's work. Um, mm -hmm. And um, he's done a survey of the whole town, uh, going and looking at the number of cars that are generally parked on street uh, all the way around the town. Um, and with that, he's come up with the sort of figures and the strategy. There's a lot of technical stuff here, but essentially, sorry, um, we're beholden to OCC at the moment on this because it's highways. For most of it, we're beholden to them. They are coming up with a strategy and they're talking about six months time that they will have their strategy in place. So I think what this is quite a long view if you look at the figure the dates you know we're talking about wanting to get infrastructure into place by 2030 so that gives us nine years and i know that occ works slowly but i hope that we'll be able to get it done in that time um the uh where i think um the um we can the town council can help is with there's quite a lot of what's effectively off street parking. I mean, say for instance, in Mount View, there's the garages. Now, I don't believe that they're on the highway, you know, and there's, 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 there's all sorts of parking bays and odd areas. So I think there's quite a bit of work to do there. And what um, really what the, the, the gist of the, this is that the planning committee take note of the recommendations and ask the transport strategy group, this is kind of throwing the bucket over the wall really, um, to, to, to the transport strategy group to take responsibility for, uh, I, I would put in developing and implementing uh, electric vehicle charging 
policy. What Tony has left out of here, um, and he's actually asked me to include it, is again, we've got a policy that we've been writing up for the neighborhood plan. And uh, what we'd ask is that you uh, have a motion, firstly, to, to, to make the transport strategy group aware that this is coming down the pipe, this is coming down to them, and ask them to look at it and ask them to take it on. Um, and secondly, to tell Jody and myself as the neighborhood plan steering group that we should writ have written the policies we have written um, for, for EV charging. Um, uh, so so uh, it's, it's all again, a bit cut before the horse, um, mm. but what we need is a mandate to do it. Uh, to, to include that policy. We, we shouldn't be doing it without a mandate. Okay, thank you, Patrick. Um, jo, jo, should, we, should we just hear from Jody first and then, and then we'll throw it out to councillors? Yeah, so I'm just in agreement with Patrick. Um, it's good to have that recommendation so that the transport strategy group can take uh, that forward and look at the overall strategy for this moving forward, um, but also for the neighbourhood plan to look specifically at um, policies within that um, to focus on new charging points. And um, so, yeah. Okay, thank you. thank you. Thank uh, you. Councillor Hamilton, you've got a statement or question? Yeah, I'm in agreement as well. I'm pleased to see this report. Um, um, I think the uh, development of Gardner Place where they put the electric points in it is, is, is the way forward. Um, I'm, I'm slightly concerned that this is going to take nine years, but we've got to make um, some progress. Yeah. Um, and I, I, I regularly get emails from David Nimmer Smith, who now lives in Oxford, to say how, how far Oxford is ahead. Um, and we need to catch up in Henley. So I'm pleased to see that Tony's written this report. And um, yes, absolutely, the neighbourhood plan group or the transport steering group um, need to have a policy in place so that when developments like Gardner Place happen with a car park uh, adjoined, um, we ensure that um, we accelerate uh, along the uh, transformation of uh, having electric, electric vehicle points in the right place. Mm, thank you. Uh, any other councillor wish to make any comment or statements? Yes, Councillor Plant. No, I was going to say, you know, again, good work. And Tony Hoskins has done brilliant work. And I know that Fiona's kind of stepped straight into, into the fight, as it were, for EV charging points. And, you know, I was just looking at the report, you know, I think one of the biggest areas that, you know, we can have an impact on is our own assets. You know, the car parking spaces that we own lead by example, whether it's the Rugby Club or Mill and Marsh Meadows, is to do a town-wide unified approach to it. Uh, you know, show the residents and show visitors what can be achieved and then encourage further residential developments and private residences to do exactly the same. You know, we mm. can create the user interface or the ecosystem, they call it in the EV world, simple and accessible. Uh, more residents will be able to access it, more will be able to ch share charges, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So, you know, I think only good work can be done and we should be leading in our own assets first, as it were. This one we will be. You know, we will be waiting for OCC uh, to do it, however long that takes. So if Oxford are so advanced, then hopefully it'll trickle down when they look beyond their own immediate. Uh, um. Yes, well said, Councillor Plant. Ca um, yes, ca um, Councillor Arlott. Yeah, per perhaps it would pay the likes of Council Hamilton to get involved in this rather than make a little derogatory statement about uh, uh, David Nimmo Smith. Um, our ex county councillor for 12 years that didn't really do a lot. And so rather make derogatory comments, uh, Councillor Hamilton, when you get involved with some of these things rather than always complaining, and that always there's always a complaint somewhere and you do absolutely nothing. So sorry about that, it's a little bit personal. The good, the good thing about this, while I'm speaking, the good thing about this now is that uh, SODC have come up with 20 million pounds from their seal money uh, which can be used for infrastructure. So hopefully there will be money available uh, when a lot of this starts to come to, uh, to fruition. Uh, so that, that's a good sign, uh, hopefully. But um, once again, obviously, thanks, especially Tony uh, Hoskins for the amount of work that he's done on, uh, on this paper. Thank you. Mm. Yes, yeah, so I, I, I mean, I second that. I, I, the, the, He's done this in conjunction with the uh, other working committee, but they've gone around basically the whole of Henley 
listing exactly where all the spots are that, that so <laughs> some of the report is written already, which is incredible. I mean, I noticed um, that um, SODC Climate Emergency Work, they've actually um, uh, nominated a councillor, Councillor Caroline Newton, to attend the, uh, the meetings of the new Oxfordshire Electric Vehicle Infrastructure Steering Group. Um, so I hope that Patrick and Tony and, and the working group are in touch with this councillor just to see how um, they're pushing Oxfordshire County Council along. I don't think there's been a meeting yet, though, or I couldn't find any agendas for it um, at all. Um, so let's put a motion forward, um, as suggested by um, Patrick. Um, and the motion is... Um, for the Transport Committee to um, create and work on um, a, a, an EV charging point infrastructure for Henley-on-Thames. Um, do I have a seconder? Yeah, I'll second that. Thank you. Um, and all those in favour? Okay, thank you. That's carried. Right, so we look forward to seeing how that progresses. And do keep the planning committee updated on the transport committee because um, I don't know why I seem to. Yes, Jodie. Could you also just uh, make a recommendation in relation to the neighbourhood plan? Because um, Patrick added in an element. Did, yes. Is that within that recommendation as well? OK, yeah. yes. So um, so this policy, um, my motion is uh, for this policy to be included in the neighbourhood plan. Uh, the revised neighbourhood plan. Is that seconded? All those in favour? Thank you, that's carried. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Um, so just in conclusion then, with the when it comes to the transport strategy, I'm sure that more councillors would, would be happy to get involved with this because you know we're going through a really, really important um, change, I think, altogether in this country. And it's all very well coming up with all of this, but you know we really need to take the public with us on this. Um, so you know anything we can do as councillors to to bring this bring the message out um, and help people with it, the better. So thank you again for attending, um, Patrick and Claudia. It's very much appreciated. Thank you. Okay, let's move on, councillors, to yeah, the next thanks, item. Patrick, thanks, uh, Claudia. Thank you. Um, okay, so let's move on. We've gone through now the decision da, 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 climate emergency. Work. So we're on number 11, which is the Elizabeth Road um, yellow lines. Um, Councillor Arlett, did you want to speak to this? Yeah, just briefly, um, Chairman, what, what's happening here? Um, all of a sudden, there, there's cars parking almost from Valley Road up to the junction of Grays Road. So when you're trying to go from Valley Road uh, up to the junction and cars are coming the other way, you kind of get caught ha halfway. Now, if that's not bad enough, you then get cars that are trying to get into Elizabeth Road, can't get into Elizabeth Road, so they get stuck in the middle of Grays Road. Mm -hmm. And obviously cars are going along there pretty, pretty quickly. Um, Councillor Gavishak did say that he's already passed this on to Oxford County Council, so perhaps we should let them look at it and see what they come back with. But we need to do something. And as Councillor Gavishak said, it may well mean double yellow lines either side of the road down to Valley Road, and then people could park in Valley Road, which is a bit wider, and there's more car park spaces there. But it's even worse at school time. At school time, it's absolutely horrendous. We've now got people I know, I spoke to in Elizabeth Road, don't drive up there. They'd rather go out the other end of uh, Elizabeth Road and then drive all the way around because it's just so unsafe at the moment. So that, that's the main thing. It is totally unsafe trying to get out into, into um, Elizabeth, uh, sorry, into Grace Road from Elizabeth Road from that end. So I would suggest that we, we leave it until, I can't remember the person's name that uh, Stephen Gavishak said, but we leave it until he comes back uh, with his view on, on a way forward with this. And mm -hmm. hopefully that will come back fairly quickly. But your principal, are councillors um, happy with this? Yes, Councillor Hamilton. Um, I noticed that the vehicles there are probably being used for the developments that are happening at the top of Grays Road. 
Um, and that's why we've all of a sudden got them parked. I'm quite happy for OCC to look at this, but you know, when Oakford Court was happening, we had a lot of um, vans and um, trades, as it were, parking for, you know, and you always have it for a four or six week period. So my view is whilst OCC can look at this, why don't we just wait six months and um, see whether it's a, a long-term problem. It may just be whilst the, uh, the, those, those developments on the corner, which are in the picture, second picture, while, whilst they're being um, tarted up, as it were, um, that we have a problem and it may just go away. Because we've never had a problem here before, have we, Councillor Arla? Yes, we have. And um, why don't you just pop up now after we finish the meeting and count how many cars are there now? And I'll guarantee there'll be six or seven. Okay. So, right. Have a little look now. Why don't you have a little jog up the road? Um, no, that's all right. I've, I've, been, I've been out for my run today. Thank you, Councillor Arla. <laughs> all right. Perhaps you, perhaps you could jog around there yourself. All right. I don't need to. I've got the answer to it. Okay. You think you have? No, no, I'll just say. Okay, it okay, okay. Oh, no, no, okay. Councillor Plant, did you want to? Did you have any um, observations? I'd love um, a cup of tea. And no. <laughs> chocolate. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that sounds good. Uh, Councillor Romans. <laughs> okay. Well, I mean, uh, speaking from from the chair, um, I mean, I'm in favour of this because um, it, it's. Um, I did actually have to um, drive up that road um, for an appointment, you know, quite regularly once a week, and it is a problem. Is it to see the mayor, right? <laughs> <laughs> and it it is um, it is a troublesome area, mostly because of the school. Actually, I would say, um, you know, lots of parents aren't walking anymore. I don't know why, but um, but yeah, I'm in favour of it. So let's put it to the vote then to keep pursuing this. All those in favour. Thank you, and that's carried. Um, so the next one is the progress report for applications called in. Any update, updates to note on that one? Other than what's written, uh, Chairman. Okay. Uh, there's two applications going tomorrow evening to, um, to the planning committee. Okay, thank you. Um, and the next one is just to note the progress report for the, um, for the update, you know, for instance, like the, um, Station car park. Okay, so that concludes the uh, planning committee meeting for this evening. Thank you very much for attending. Um, and um, I look forward to seeing you at the next one. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank